check, check. Check, 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 check. Check, one, one, two, check, check, check. Check, 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 one, two, one, two, check, check, check.
here's your weekly look at what is happening at Move Church. Candlelight Christmas service, Friday, December 23rd from 7 to 8 p.m. Bring your family and family candle, non-scented, please. There will be cookies and hot chocolate. There will be no service on Christmas Day. New Year's Day service. We will have our 11 a.m. service on January 1st. Come and hear our faith focus for 2023. There is a Christmas mailbox in the family foyer for Christmas cards for Pastor Bobby and Patty. Let's thank our pastors. Movers Christmas Party will be Sunday, December 18th from 5 to 7 p.m. It will be at the Pearl Parks and Recreation Building. We are looking forward to a fun evening together. There are four ways to give here at Move Church. You can give with the Tithely app or on our website at movechurch.com. Mail in your tithe offering or other contributions to our P.O. Box or in the back of the church in the giving box. Thank you and prepare for worship. Good morning, Move Church. We're so glad that you're here today. Stand up for us. Isn't it good to be at Move Church this morning? Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive the King. Let every heart prepare.
allowing us to be here. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, and thank you for your freedom that allows us to be in this place and to worship your name. Lord, we invite your presence, we invite your spirit into this place, into our hearts, and into our relationships this morning. Lord, we come in to worship your name and your name alone this morning. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Guys, we're glad that you're with us this morning here at Move Church. If you're a first-time guest, we're glad that you're with us. Can we give our first-time guests a round of applause? If you're watching online, we're so glad that you joined us this morning, but we do encourage you to join us in service, in person, and join this community. Feel the power and the presence that the Lord uses community here at Move Church. We encourage you, but we're glad that you joined us online this morning. Um, we're, this is the time where we're going to take some time to do our offering um, through our giving envelopes that we place in our giving box. And if you're a first-time guest, this is where we take some time to fill out a connection card in the seat back in front of you. Just lets us know you're here, a little bit of information about yourself. And um, we're glad that you're with us. We hope you felt welcome. Hope you felt loved as you walked into this, uh, those doors this morning. But for the next few minutes, let's do our meet and greet.
that he won't fail that he doesn't fail
is here today, aren't we so thankful that he shows up and he ministers to us? And I just encourage you to open your hearts wide for what he has for you. And uh, listen to this word that uh, mom has that the Lord put it on her heart. Praise the Lord. Uh, the Lord just showed me a picture of the disciples out on the water. When the waves began to blow, water was coming into their boat. They were getting frightful. They thought they were fixing to drown. But just before that, they saw a figure. And as it came clear, it was Jesus. And he said, fear not. And when he stepped in the boat, the waves ceased. He said, peace, be still. Whatever problem that you're facing, Whatever it is, Jesus wants you to know that he's coming to step into your boat and he is going to bring victory and he's going to bring peace. He doesn't want you worried over this. He is the great I am. He is El Shaddai. He is Elohim. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Shema, the Lord that is there. And he sees, he has not forgotten, and he is coming to get into your boat. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. So let's welcome him in our boat. Amen. Would you just lift up your hands and you need peace today? Welcome the peace speaker to come into your heart. Come, Lord. There are so many that need peace today. Lord, there's anxiety. If you've been having anxiety attacks, I believe that word is for you today. Lord God, we just rebuke that in Jesus' name. We're children of the Most High. If you've been having anxiety attacks, raise the other hand, okay? And Lord, I welcome you. Tell, tell the Lord, I welcome you in my boat today, and I thank you for peace. You bring peace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That you would take time to minister to needs today. Holy Spirit, you are the boss in this house. Have your way, and I thank you for peace. I thank you for peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Can we thank the Lord for his peace? Yeah. 
should be a living sacrifice and that is our true and proper worship. Lord, thank you for your presence being so available to us. In your most heavenly name we pray, amen. Guys, I just wanna reiterate again, thank you for joining us this morning. Guys, thank you for being with us. Our first time guests, thank you so much for joining us. Like we said, we hope you felt loved. We help, hope you felt welcome as you walked in here. Um, if you haven't had a, or if you weren't here for our announcement video, please make sure after service, after Brother Bobby's message, to go to our Facebook page, watch that. There are some important announcements in that announcement video for the next upcoming weeks. We want you guys to be involved in the things that are going on here. We want you guys to know about them, so please do that if you did not see that. But before Brother Bobby comes up here for our message, today. Let's pray over him and pray over this message. Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for everything that you're doing. Lord, thank you for everything that you are going to do in this place this morning. God, we invite your presence. We invite your spirit. Lord, we invite your presence of healing. Lord, we invite your presence of grace and mercy into this place. God, I pray that relationships be restored this morning. God, I pray that relationships with you be formed and be transform this morning. God, make a difference in someone's life this morning. God, I pray that you allow us to open our hearts for what you have for us. Lord, I ask that you bless Brother Bobby, place his dependence upon you and you alone, for it is not by his strength, but it is by you. Lord, please intervene for our lives this morning. God, meet us here in this place, and God, continue to work in us. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. Let's say amen again. Thank the Lord. Let's say a thank the Lord. Amen. Good to see you today. I'm uh, so glad that you are here. The Christmas season is amongst us, huh? Now, that is a word, amongst. Uh, can you believe two weeks from today is Christmas? Wow. Hopefully, you have your shopping done. And please, whatever you do, do not get stressed out about gifts. Uh, give love, give hugs, give brownies. If you, can, if you do not have the money... Don't let those material things steal the reason why we celebrate Christmas. Amen. That's good preaching already. Amen. 
be together, give Jesus, share Jesus, love each other, and hug, and and eat you some, if you can't afford brownies, get you some ramen noodles. I don't know, but don't let money stress you out. Amen? Amen. That was all free. Uh, I do want to make this announcement. Uh, Debbie Singley, you may not know, we love Debbie and her family. She lost her husband uh, last Sunday. And Angie Reeves, Angie, wave your hand real good, is doing a couple of things with helping to raise money for that, the funeral cost, final expenses, a bake sale, a, um, a raffle uh, for uh, help to help with that. So if you can help out with that in any way, would you see Angie at the end of the service? And also, we have some handy-dandy antibacterial still available. Would you grab four or five of those with you today and give them to somebody that you've been inviting to church that's just a little happy and uh, does say it has a tag on it that says, Be Our Guest at Move Church. And on the back, it has the scripture that who may ascend the hill of the Lord, he who has clean hands and a pure heart. And um, so uh, be sure to grab those today before you leave. All right, I, I want to get in the message today. We're in the middle of the series. But before I do that, I forgot last uh, Sunday to announce our mover of the month. And our mover of the month is Mr. Brian Wilkerson. Would you come on up? And we appreciate you as well as all of our movers. So here, my friend, is a $25 gift card. Look. And uh, also, next Sunday is our movers Christmas party. If you are a mover, this party is for you. It's at 5 o'clock. And the directions or or the information is in the announcements. So uh, there's an 80s theme. It ought to be, if you'd like to dress up, do that. I am going to do my best to dress up as the 19-year-old self. And and I'll make an apology now for that, but that's the only thing I'm going to say. Okay. You, You happy this morning? Isn't God good? Somebody needed some peace this morning, and the Lord took care of that for you, walking that this week. And uh, today, we're looking at the names of God so we can understand, excuse me, the names of Christ at the announcement of his birth. And we want to know him more. If we know him more, we will be able to worship him more. We'll serve him more. So Isaiah 9, the prophetic uh, announcement of Christ says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. That's Emmanuel, right? Have you been looking for Emmanuel this last week? I've been in some situations where I needed Emmanuel to be there, and I was reminded, Emmanuel's with me. Act nice, act kindly. And it says, the government will be on his shoulders. Now, we ought to be thankful for that right there, right? It doesn't matter who's president. It doesn't matter who's the dictator in the country. The government is on his shoulders. He's bearing the burden of that. Amen. I'm going to amen myself today. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Let me look at my, I lost my scripture. Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. So today we're going to be looking at the name Christ is Wonderful counselor. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you today for your presence being here. I thank you for every person that has come today with hungry hearts to receive from you. I know, Lord, you're going to speak to us. Church, let's pray it. Lord, speak to my heart. Change my life in Jesus' name. Amen. A little joke that has nothing to do with the message. But I saw it this week. I thought that's just too funny not to share. An older couple went to the state fair every year, and every year the man, the husband, would look at the helicopter ride, and he would tell his wife, I want to ride that helicopter. And every year the wife would say, that would cost too much money. They had been married for many, many years, and after many, many years they were attending the state fair again, And the man saw the helicopter ride, and he said, after all these years, 
I would like to ride that helicopter. And the wife, as she usually said, every year that would cost us too much money. Well, this time the helicopter pilot happened to be standing close by and he overheard their conversation. And he said, I will give y'all a ride on that helicopter if you promise that you will not say a word, if you can get through the ride without saying a word, it will not cost you. But if you say something, it's going to cost you $50. They got in the helicopter. The helicopter pilot did his best to make them scream. He went up and down, side to side. He'd done some trick maneuvers, even standing that helicopter up on its nose, and they did not say a word. He finally landed it, after, and after the ride, the man jumped out of the helicopter, and the pilot came out and said, I thought for sure I would get y'all to scream or say something. And the man said, well, I wanted to when my wife fell out, but that would cost too much money. I have a double name that I've done my best to conceal for many years. My family knows, a few of you that have known me for a long time know that I have a double name, Bobby. There's a, another name that goes with that. Don't, don't guess it. Don't hurt my feelings. In school, I did my best to conceal it, and one day it was announced over the intercom where my mom came and picked me up. Here we see Christ. He has many names, and this is one of his double names. Here he is called Wonderful Counselor, and wonderful is not just the adjective of what kind of counselor he is. He is a wonderful counselor, but he is also wonderful. The Hebrew word for wonder is pela, and it means something uncommon out of the ordinary, something miraculous. The scripture says that the virgin will give birth to a son that had never happened before, and it hasn't happened since. Christ was born of woman yet he was fathered by God. He was fully human, yet fully divine. This is the wonder of Christmas. Now, the world has coined the phrase the magic of Christmas because they don't acknowledge the supernatural. They don't acknowledge the wonder of God, but it is the miraculous working of God. Christmas is the celebration of the miraculous. If you're taking notes, you can fill in this blank. Christmas should remind us to never lose our wonder because we have a wonderful God. We should never lose our anticipation of the miraculous because we have a wonderful God, a miraculous God. When I, I have a few little stories about myself, I hope they don't bore you too much but I know my story, I don't know yours. And at about, I'm guessing I was about three years old, I have this memory, it's a little fuzzy, but this is what I remember, that I am with my mom and she's driving a truck and I'm standing beside her and we take a curve and the door flies open. I'm not sure about this part, but I wanna believe because of my response, I had a cape on because this was my thought. I will fly out of this truck and close this door. And if it had not been for a faulty cape, I would have. I did fly out of the truck, but I didn't make it back in the truck. And when I came to, I have this memory that there were people standing all around me and I'm on the sidewalk. Again, all of the details I'm not sure of, but I really believe with all of my heart the only reason that I did not hurt myself and I did not 
cracked my skull open is because I have a wonderful God that was watching over me. And I think all of us could attest to things like that. There are times that God showed up in a miraculous way. How many of you can remember one right now? And it was God. And you should not have made it out. It should not have worked for you. It should have been the end of you. But God. And as many of those events that we know about, can I help you today? There are others that we don't even know that he was right there. You pulled up to the train tracks and you were mad because the train was coming by and it stalled your speedy effort to get somewhere, but God was keeping you from a deadly accident on the other side. Psalms 40 verse 5 says, Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done, the things you planned for us. Nothing compares with you, or no one can compare with you, were I to speak and tell of your deeds, they would be too many to declare. Come on, let's thank the Lord. You raised your hand. Let's raise it one more time and thank the Lord for being a wonderful God to you, for doing the miraculous. We don't thank him enough, do we? You have showed up so many times and done what only you can do in my life, and I thank you for that. You know, children really don't try to figure out the details of why, how one man is able to deliver all the gifts on Christmas morn. They just care that the gifts are there. They're glad that he did. And the Bible teaches us that we need to have a childlike faith. That we should not try to just make sure everything fits in our ability to reason. When we put God in, in that kind of limitation, we are limiting what he does in our life. If we have to understand it, that means God is not God in your life. He's so much beyond our understanding. His ways are high above our ways. His thoughts are way above our thoughts. There should be a wonder about him. He is miraculous. He can do what he wants when he wants to do it. And we should expect it. We should embrace him. We should know him as wonderful. He is a wonderful Messiah. He is the chain-breaking, stronghold-shaking, miracle-making, forgiveness for the taking, Holy Ghost-quaking, wonderful-working Christ. Ooh, I felt the Holy Ghost on that one. Jeremiah 32 says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard for me? I believe he's speaking that with, to someone today with authority. That he's done more for you in the past, greater things for you in the past, than the little thing that you're doubting him about today. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said, everything is possible for he who believes. Jesus is wonderful, and he wants us to be full of his wonder. Full of his wonder. Man, you want, you've received Christ, receive his wonder this Christmas. Begin believing again. Begin expecting again. He can show up at any moment. Wonderful counselor. He is wonderful counselor. Counselor in Hebrew means yoaz. And that means to advise, counsel, devise, purpose. And that picture is a king giving counsel to his people. And the meaning that I derive when I put those two together is this. Christ was miraculously sent to perform God's plan to spiritually advise and devise a supernatural deliverance for his creation. For me and you because of his great love. So there are four reasons that I have 
to bring it home to us. Four reasons Christ is a wonderful counselor. The first one is this. He knows all things. He knows all things. He knows when you promise that you're going to do something, if he would just do this, Lord, if you do this, I'll be committed to you. I'll start going to church. And he knows that you ain't going to do it when you promise you would do it. <laughs> he knows all things. The Bible says he knows the end from the beginning. Colossians 2, verse 2 and 3, it says, My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love so they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Christ is a wonderful counselor because he has all wisdom and knowledge. You know, knowledge is knowing what to do. Wisdom is knowing when to do it. And the right thing at the wrong time may not be a good thing. Christ knows what's good for you, and he knows when it's good for you. He said, do not grow weary and well-doing, for in, good, in, in the due season you will reap a harvest if you faint not. There is a harvest time that comes, and when the harvest time comes, it's good for you, but only at the harvest time. If Christ has not given you something good, then you must trust him. He's still working on it. It's either not good for you or it's not good for you at this moment. Every single person ought to just thank the Lord right now. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you. I may be single like a Pringle. But I got the joy. I tell Nick, I've told him before, it's better to wait long than to marry wrong. <laughs> Woo! Before you were married, you thought you could eat each other up. After you're married, you wish you would have. I'll preach a little bit for somebody, helping somebody out. Mm, put some Holy Ghost. I told Nick, pray fast, pray fast. <laughs> There's a song out right now, I love the phrase, and it says, if it's not good, then he's not done. He's not done with it if it's not good for you. He knows what's good for you. He has walked in your shoes. If you've never walked in my shoes, I probably won't take your advice. Now, there are certain godly principles that we all learn from. But when it comes to life instruction, if you haven't been there, don't try to tell somebody else what they should do. But Jesus has been there. He came in flesh. You have a high priest, the Bible says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. But, well, Lord, you just don't know what I'm facing. Yes, he does. And he knows how to get you out. He knows what you need to do. The second reason he's a wonderful counselor is this. He not only knows all things, he cares for you. He cares for you. He wants what's best for you. He knows what's best for you, and he wants what's best for you. Isn't that so good? When I was in school, I could really, I'd done well on tests. I, I, I liked tests because I could remember, I could memorize, just I can look at a page and get that just in about five minutes. I'm good, good. But I did study. And I remember really more than one time there was a, someone in the class who wanted to cheat off of my test. Well, I have a problem with that. I did study. You should study. So I remember 
one specifically, uh, one time specifically, I saw someone cheating on my test, so I helped them out. I put the wrong answers down. And then when they weren't looking, I erased it and put the right answers down. I didn't care that they failed the test. They should have done what they needed to do. We have a wonderful counselor that even when we do it wrong, he wants what's best for us. He doesn't want us to fail. He wants us to succeed. Please, if you have a wrong perspective of your God, allow him to show you he's wonderful. He's a wonderful counselor. He wants you to succeed in life. Psalms 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Look at this. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. That's your God. He will show you the way. You just follow. He wants what's best. You can trust him. Your wonderful counselor cares for you, and he wants you to succeed. He wants you to benefit from the great things he's already purchased. He's already provided for you. Third reason he's a wonderful counselor is this. This is probably my favorite. He resolves with authority and power. He resolves with authority and power. To resolve means to settle or find a solution. So he not only knows what's good, he wants what's good for you. He has the authority and power to make it happen. Isn't that good? Y'all with me today? You're awake today? Isaiah 52, 10 says, The Lord, uh, look, listen, listen to this. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. So he has, and I think he continues, he rolls up his sleeves to do his work of salvation on the earth. He lays bare his holy arm. Isn't that amazing? He'll do it for you. He'll do it for me. He is a wonderful counselor. He has all authority, all power, within him, and he wants to share it with us. A man fell into a pit and couldn't get himself out. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> a new age follower came along and said, you only think you're in a pit. A re super religious, hyper religious person said, only bad people fall into a pit. A charismatic said, just confess that you're not in a pit. A Calvinist said, this was no accident. The pit was your destiny. An optimist said this, you will find your way out of the pit, so just enjoy the pit while you're there. <laughs> the pessimist said this, you'll never get out of that pit. You might as well get used to it. Politician came along and said, it's the other party's fault that you're in that pit. And if you vote for me, I will pass a law to remove all pits. <laughs> and Jesus came along and had compassion in the man and reached down and grabbed the man's hand and pulled him out of the pit. I am that man. What about you? He had compassion. He didn't shake his head and said, you get what you belong what you deserve, you belong there. He reached down and grabbed me. That's a wonderful counselor. He takes action. He works his power and authority in you. And what's so amazing, he works his power and authority through you to show others, that he is a wonderful counselor. This is his promise. He said in Mark 
16, and these signs will accompany those who believe in my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will place they will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, if it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. Sometimes we, we may need a doctor. Sometimes we may need a counselor, and God can work through those professions. But sometimes... All we need is the wonderful counselor to settle it with resolve, with all his power and authority. Amen? So he knows what you need. He wants to give you what you need, and he has the power to make it happen. Me and Patty have uh, just sold our home, and we're... Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we're free at last. We thought we wanted land. We didn't want land. We, we now think we know what we may want. But in the loan closing, there was a, it went around so smooth. I mean, it was just great. And uh, there was a hiccup uh, just a few days before we were to close. And this hiccup could have been a deal breaker. And not to go into any details, we called and, and trying to get it resolved, and we needed another inspection, and that inspection had to say the exact thing that we needed it to say. And the company, for them to even come out and do a turnaround time on the report, we were told it could be five to seven business days. And um, we just needed a miracle. And we had people pray on Wednesday night and said, y'all pray for us. And some people that are close, they knew what, what it was because it really could have been a deal breaker. We had already moved out. I didn't want to move back in. You, you feel me? And um, not only did the report say what we needed it to say, we got the report back in two business days. Now, that may not be big and, and wonderful to you, but we've been rejoicing all week long in the wonderful counselor. He worked that thing out, and you cannot argue me down that it was not my God that did that. And how many times does he do that for us over and over again? See, it's very possible we'll move on. We will move on. Don't want to move too many times. There'll be something else that comes up. We'll need to go to him again. We need a miracle. And it's very likely that we'll forget the significance the, of, of, of the, the miracle that he just worked for us. You, you hear me today? But he still just keeps on being wonderful. How many of you have been in a place where there was no way out and God had to show up? Would you stand up on your feet if that's you? There was no other way out. He had to do it. For us that are, and you, look, and you know, you know exactly what that moment was. You can go right back. Now, how many of us are standing today and you need him to do something else for you? Would you raise the hand? Christmas is a testimony of the wonder-working Messiah. He done it then, he did it for you in your situation, and he hasn't changed. He will do it again. Would you just go ahead and put your faith in him today? Would you close your eyes and say, Lord, I'm going to believe you again. I'm sorry I doubted. If you've doubted him, just tell him, Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, you've done bigger things for me. You saved me from the devil's hell. That's pretty huge. You've done too many good things for me to doubt you now. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. I want to give you this, this last point just real fast that I'm going to get to where I believe the Lord wants to minister at. Uh, you can remain standing if you would. I won't be long. The last one is this. He's always available. He's always available. Your doctor, he may have to work you in. It depends on when you have to call him. Counselor may not be able to see you to next year. 
But he said in Matthew 28, 20, Surely I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. Romans 10, 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is where I want to close at. I asked the Lord, okay, so this word, Lord, I believe it's from you. How do you want to work that? Where do you want to really do some work in? And I, I, the phrase that kept coming back was back to wonder. That God wants to get us back to wonder. And then I, he put it on my heart that there is a man in the Bible that was paralyzed. The scripture says that we walk by faith, not by sight. And the Lord has told me that, that there are some who are now paralyzed in their faith. Whatever the injury, there's something that injured your faith and it's caused you to be paralyzed in your faith. And he brought me to the attention of the scripture where the man was healed. In Luke 5, it says, Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. And immediately as everyone watched, the man jumped up picked up his mat, and went home praising God. Everyone was gripped with great wonder and awe, and they praised God, exclaiming, we have seen amazing things today. And this is what I believe the Lord gave me to tell you. I believe the word of the Lord today is this. Stand up in your faith, pick up your wonder, and go home. Back to wonder. Back to believing in your wonderful counselor. He wants to do mirac the miraculous for you. And he has bound himself to his word. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But when you have faith, the Lord will show himself strong on your behalf. And he gives you the faith. He wants you to use it and grow in it, yes, but he gives you the faith. Would you bow your head, please? And you would be honest today. You know you need the Lord to heal your faith. You're paralyzed, not moving forward, and you know you've lost the wonder. That's you. Would you just raise your hand? That's me. I need God to heal my faith today. No shame in that whatsoever. We all go through those times. Anyone else? Yes, yes. God sees your hands. Anyone else? You don't even have to keep them up. You can just raise it and put it right back down. In a minute, we're all going to pray. You just need your faith healed today. Hey, God, to give me the wonder again. I used to just wake up and wonder, I wonder, God, what are you going to do? How are you going to work it out today? Just call say, hey, that promise has not been fulfilled yet does not mean it's not on the way. Just don't faint. Don't give up. Don't lose faith. Anyone else? Just raise it. Lord, I need it today. Need it. Need my faith healed. I'm going to get my wonder back. Christmas is a time we celebrate the wonderful Messiah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe you're doing it today. You've seen the hands that have already been raised. Lord God, give a gift of faith today. Heal that faith. Ask him to do it. Heal my faith. Sorry. I slipped into doubting. I slipped into reasoning. I've heard the enemy's lies, and I listened to them. Forgive me, Jesus. I shouldn't have. The reason that we celebrate Christmas is because of your wonder birth, miraculous deliverance, and you're coming again, that should give us enough faith to believe for you to do anything for us. Would you do it, Lord? Would you do it? I know you are. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In the mighty experience with the Lord, he's going to allow you to use that wonder. He's going to see if you got it again, okay?
The devil's going to try to take it from you. The Lord's going to make sure you got it. Amen? You're going to say, no, my Lord. Watch. One of the ways that you can really, really keep your wonder is watch your mouth. Watch what you say. Speak it. Speak faith. You'll see it build. Your wonder will come back. I remember, I know I've probably shared this before, but one Christmas as a child, Mom and Dad had a business, had a fruit stand. And I was uh, it was going to be very cold that night. Dad had a wood-burning stove there. So for they told us it was to keep the vegetables and the fruit from freezing that on Christmas Eve, we went and spent the night in that fruit stand. Now, that's a memory that, that was either crazy or uh, by my parents' part, or they had some, some, or maybe it was really to keep the fruit and vegetables from freezing. I don't know. But I remember as a child thinking, how is Santa Claus going to find us here? The fruit stand. And I think I even posed that question. They said, don't worry, he's got it. And when we went home, we saw the gift. The wonder of your Messiah. Somebody maybe you think you've, you, you've gone, you're out of place. You made that turn left when he told you to turn right. He knows how to show himself strong and get you back on track, okay? You got to be obedient, yes. But he knows how to reveal himself to you right where you are. Isn't that a good God? He would show up right where you are and do the miraculous for you to put you right back on track with him. I am so thankful. Amen. Amen. We'll be looking at uh, next Sunday, I believe, the last name in that announcement in Isaiah, the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Somebody already got peace today, but come still to, to the message so you can celebrate the Prince of Peace. Let me bless you. Don't forget... Movers Christmas party next Sunday. If you are a mover, this party is for you. Let me pray for you. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Merry Christmas. Have a wonderful week. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's do our part by sharing this video so not only us, but everyone can see. And let's have a great rest of our day.